Are we up? Are we actually up here? This is all untested, untried. We running, the man says. I'm in my daughter's place. My son-in-law, up to a few minutes ago, was just up at the top here behind me. I'm on his Wi-Fi. I think we're okay. I don't really know. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll try and do some work here today. I know when I came over here, what was it? Three weeks ago, exactly three weeks ago, when I jumped over here. I brought some tools. I brought some wood and some tools, but uh, up to now, it's just been kind of kind of a little busy and there hasn't been much time to do something. But uh, the situation with my mother is much, much, much improved. I'm not going to share all her medical details with the internet, but my mother is much improved. She's resting. I think she's watching this with my sister. And maybe we'll talk a bit about it later. We'll see how it goes. But uh, she's on a, coming around. My mom's coming around. You know. So, okay, what we've got here is, what's this? We're going to pick up where I left off, actually, whatever it was, uh, years and years and years ago, with the carving work on the Patreon chibis. I got one, two blocks were done when we left off. I'm going to try today and paste another one down and get going on the next one. And while we're doing this, we can chat about various stuff. There's probably going to be lots of questions about my mom and stuff like that. We can answer a few. Let me see how it's going. Not this one. I don't know. I've also discovered over the paper out. Yeah, Tom Wright. <laughs> paper out. <laughs> Some things will never die, right? Paper out. So, okay, there. Just so everybody knows the the person on the stream here called S Hamilton, 2018. That's my sister, Sherry Hamilton, born in 2018. I don't think so. That's my sister, and she's at the bedside with my mother. And my mother, I guess, is. Uh, she can't actually type in here herself, but she's ready to chat with you. So, so. She's had quite the adventure the past few weeks. Quite the adventure. You know. She's listening here, so I gotta be careful what I say. But yeah, Mama's had quite the adventure. But she's uh, back for another round, another nine holes, 18 holes, whatever. <laughs> We've had quite the roller coaster. We've had a staggering roller coaster. So, lots of help from all kinds of people. Lots of help from all my family, and the the, the staff and stuff are just so good. Is there a camera? Sherry asked me, "Is there a camera?" Yeah, of course. I'm online. We're showing the desk here. What are you seeing, Sherry? What aren't you seeing? I'm not sure what you're asking, Sherry. I guess my sister is, is viewing on her phone. If she can't see the video, can somebody maybe give her a hint about how to get the video? Where is Dave now? Dave is in his daughter's house. I'm in Vancouver, Canada. I'm at my daughter Humi's place. This is my second daughter and her husband, Craig. This is their home. They're actually all out right now. My, my daughter is out with the kids somewhere. This is their home in Vancouver, and as luck would have it, they are three, four blocks from the hospital. So it's perfect. She chose a perfect house to live in for my specific needs this week, <laughs> this month. And I'm completely disorganized because, you know, as you know, it's uh, disorganized. I've just got stuff that I grabbed a few weeks ago. Thanks for all the good wishes. I know, to speak in general, my mom did go down quite heavily uh, a month ago or so. She had a surgery to, re to open an artery in her, in her neck, and uh, she's back up and running. Has been recovering very, very, very well over the past few weeks, with a little help from friends, and she's doing very, very well. My own plans for getting back to Tokyo and stuff, it's going to depend on, on mom's placement. She's still in the hospital at the moment. She's, we're going to, you know, we're working on the placement for her, where she's going to be living for the next little while. And once that's organized, then I'll be free, hopefully, to get back to Tokyo for a while. But I will be coming over here back and forth from now on to uh, help with the family care.
minimized and now working. So good, you got video and chat. Thank you, Cherry. Good. So what we got for those of you who were in it or were, weren't in it, this is a pair of prints that's going to be used for our Patreon chibis this year. It's a pair of designs by John Amos. And we did the key block. I did the key block back in uh, a million years ago, back in March. Did some color transfers. One color block is done. I brought the blank blocks with me. And if I can actually remember what to do today, we're going to get started on one of the other color faces. Maybe we'll use this one. Yeah, things are very much stabilized now. Who is sizing the paper back in Japan? That's being done by Aoyama-san. He has stepped up to the plate to do that. Those of you might who know our history might remember that Aoyama-san and I were building a sizing machine some years ago. So Aoyama-san is familiar with the sizing. He's done it with me a few years ago. He knows what it's all about. And he stepped up to the plate to uh, take care of it. And so far, I haven't heard any screaming and yelling from the printers. It seems it's going well. The our order flow system, as far as you know, the management system at Mokohankan, it's all online. So I've been involved with that, you know, working with the ladies who are doing that part of our job. So I've been in touch with that because it's all online. But the physical print production, I've been completely out of touch with it. And I don't know the actual schedule, when I will actually be back in Tokyo, I don't know. No, this isn't my mom's apartment. Koringami is saying this is Bet's apartment in Canada. Actually, no, I'm at my daughter's house. This is my daughter Humi's place, where she lives with her husband and two kids. It's about four blocks from the Vancouver General Hospital. It's perfect. Do you mind sharing which part of Canada you are from? I'm not actually from Canada. I'm from Britain. I was born in England, and our family emigrated to Canada in 1957. I've lived in Toronto, Winnipeg, uh, Edmonton, near Vancouver, here and there, all over the place. I lived in Canada for about 30 years before moving to Japan. Fumi Hankan. So, <laughs> they have a real nice house. I tell you, it's crazy. I haven't been in a modern Canadian house ever. I left here like 35 years ago, and the house we lived in as kids was kind of a bit old fashioned and stuff. So, I've never lived in a modern Canadian home. And this is my first experience of being in one. And we're like, we're one block from 12th Avenue, which is a main cross town artery, and it's traffic just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you can't hear anything. You can't hear anything. The walls here are massively thick. The windows are insulated. You can't hear anything. It's wonderful. Not even the AC of the local department store. I think Canada does this sensibly. Japan doesn't care about that kind of stuff. But uh, for those of you who don't know what he's mentioning here, in Asakusa, we are bombarded with noise all the time. And a major noise is the air conditioning unit from a big local mall, shopping mall, department store. It's crazy. I'm here in the middle of town, and I can't hear anything. It's dead silent. And the house is warm. Look at this shirt sleeves. It's impossible for me in Japan. I'm remembering all these good parts about living in Canada. <laughs> Another thing I'm curious about too is how much I've 
gained here weight wise we were following my my weight over the past few months as i've been losing weight getting into those new genes that i got from one of the twitch members here the chat members here but i think i'm probably gaining weight again we'll see once i get back to tokyo we'll check it again and see no swimming no time i've been up in the morning i'm at the hospital at 7 20 ready to help mom with breakfast and I'm normally there till about five or six each day, helping her out. But uh, mom now, she's got to the stage where she doesn't need actual, you know, we don't have to feed her anymore. She's taking care of herself, stuff like that. Yeah, mom's doing well. And one of the first things, you know, after I got here a few weeks ago, get to the hospital, get there, mom is down for the count, you know, she has her breakfast the first day. And right after breakfast, the first thing mom says every day is Wordle. And she's been doing Wordle every day for the past few weeks. This is the first thing that came back after the stroke. So we should write to the New York Times or, or the guy, Josh, who made that game and thank him. Wordle has been... Uh, a real helper for my mom. I'm being fairly optimistic. I'm getting this block ready. I'm going to paste down, but I really don't know if I can carve here. You know, I don't have any lens here. I don't have a special light. They do have a, my son-in-law, I don't know if that's going to be, let's, let's get this going first. My son-in-law has this sort of light they use. I think in the winter, when it's all cloudy and rainy every day here, they get a bit sort of, he said, well, not depressed, but whatever. They want sunlight. So they've got a light here. I need a flask. Someone's asking about Quartal. That's interesting because one day last week that did come up. Somebody must have mentioned it to my mom that there was such a thing. And after we had finished the normal Wordle, she said, let's do Quartal. And I'm like, I'm not quite sure if we're ready for that, Mom. <laughs> but, but we did it. We tried it and she popped it. She got all four. She's doing okay. This sheet is something I prepared back in Tokyo, of course. I prepared the you know, tracings here for this print all back in Tokyo before I left. I think I put too much glue on this. Have my grandkids shown interest in the carving? Not really, I know. My daughter, where I'm living right now, her children are four years old and one year old. So there's nothing that they really have to do with this. They, of course not. Little Clara and Archie, they're four and one. And my other two grandchildren from my older daughter, I don't see them much. They're living actually a bit out of Vancouver. And I hear that they're coming this weekend over here. So we'll see you. I'll get a chance to see them again this weekend. But they're teenage boys, you know. They're not going to be interested in stuff like this. They're interested in, you know what they're interested in. It's it's Fortnite and whatever whatever it is that's going on, the latest thing. So, Yeah, somebody's mentioning Loodle here, and I did. I read about that a while ago, and I was thinking, should I show this to my mom, you know? And I'm thinking, I probably don't really want to know about this. She'd probably say, let's try. <laughs> the first Canadian peel. Hi. When's the last time I did carving in Canada? Actually, you know, it's not all that long ago. It's about 10 years ago. 
when I, one of the summer visits we made back here, it would be about 10 or 11 or 12 years ago. It, I was, when I was making my CD, you know, we made a CD-ROM about your first print, how to do Japanese printmaking. And I didn't have cameras and stuff, so my son-in-law, not this one, the other son-in-law, he took some video for me. And I did that in mom's kitchen over in, uh, at mom's place. So I did, I did the carving for that uh, book here in Canada, and that would be about 10 years ago. So here we go. Don't know what we're gonna get today. Not gonna get in one piece maybe, let's try. I need more hands. Okay, 10 out of 10 it wasn't, but we got it off. It's good, it's good. Have I missed living in Canada? Yeah, yes and no, you know. I've been here now three weeks this time round. I haven't seen much. It's just been from my daughter's place here to the hospital, three blocks back and forth, back and forth, back and first, back and forth. So I don't really see much about it. And there's some stuff I like about the Canada that I see, and there's some stuff that I don't feel so comfortable with. The, you know, the food, the supermarkets, oh my God, it's magnificent to die for. Lots of food in Japan, of course, Japanese food. Uh, just the, the supermarkets here, the selection of ready-made food, the salads. I guess it's so much of a thing now that young couples where both people work and stuff like this. So the supermarkets have a staggering, wonderful selection of ready-made food. And I have really, really, really enjoyed that. Stuff I don't like, whatever. Again, I, I have to be careful. You walk down the street, just even just to get to the supermarket, you know, and you've walked past a gang of people and it's a cloud of smoke and they're all smoking stuff and... The, the public mood about when you walk down the street and meet people, it's sort of almost hostile. Just to get from Broadway down two blocks to, to, or to 7th and 8th where I go to the supermarket there. Just walk two blocks down and the people you see, they sort of don't get out of your way or they're a little hostile or you're sort of, Jesus, what's going on here, you know? In the hospital and stuff, people have been normal, friendly, wonderful, but outside, it's sort of a, I don't know how to, how to verbalize it, I don't know. Instead of people defaulting to friendliness, there seems to be a default to, to antagonism and, and fear rather than a default to a friendly, smooth, happy environment. I don't know. I don't know. It's a bit funny. We'll see how it goes. I haven't really had a chance to get out there and uh, and, uh, and interact with many people yet. I don't know. So like somebody's saying, Japan is different, the rest of the world is different. You know, I really don't know how much I'm seeing Canada and how much I'm seeing an environment that's not Japan, because that's all I know now for 35 years. So I don't know. No, somebody's saying hostile and Canadian, so maybe I'm being a bit um, exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating, but it's the mood, you know? There's a mood of, I should keep away from that person. I should keep away, don't bump into that person. There's a real mood of, you know, walling yourself off and not being friendly with people. I don't know. I don't know. We gotta cut. I've got my glasses here. Where are they? Just one sec. So far, I seem to have remembered everything. I'm just waiting to find out that it's a deal killer, something I forgot that I can't work without. Let's get this light on and get this sorted out. 
I think I can move that back. I don't know. I don't know. Is that better? Ooh. <laughs> Getting blinded. I'm going to put some newspaper in front of this. Too big. Is that better? It's better for me. Is that okay? Good for the block, good for me. I think we're okay. No, I didn't bring the scope. Didn't bring the microscope, no. There's a limit to what I could grab at the last minute and fit in one bag. I even remembered this. No, it's not a heat lamp. It's one of those things where, I you know, it's a, I think they have it for a mood. In winter, when you don't have enough sunshine, you're supposed to put this thing on and sit in front of it, I guess, for 30 minutes or something. I don't know. Okay, let's sharpen up. What about my eye appointment? I have missed it. I missed my eye appointment. It was last week, two weeks, and my eye doctor is going to be upset. There's nothing he can do about it. There's priorities and there's priorities. Whatever, when I get back to Japan, we'll have to start a new three month schedule. No, I think there's nothing. No, no, it's cool. It's LEDs or something. No, no, no heat problem here. We don't think so. So I miss my swimming schedule, my daily swimming schedule. I miss it very much, very much. And also too, I didn't have time to tell anybody there what was going on. This all happened and bang, Monday morning I was out of there. So the guys at the pool, the regular people, the next locker and the guy that swims in the next lane and the people you chat to, all they know is that I stopped coming, I just disappeared. And I had been talking to them about the weight thing. One of the guys there, he knew that I was sort of near my weight target. So they are probably thinking that I've hit my weight target and I quit. <laughs> I don't know. Make a guest appearance. Come on over. Come on. Come on, say hello. There is a four-legged animal in the house. Doesn't really like me so much. It's a cat. In fact, it's funny. It's a black cat with white feet. It looks exactly like Boots Chan, the old cat. I don't have a tissue here. Hang on one sec. Let me find a tissue. Yo, so. Also, I'm having real trouble with this. I'm sitting on the floor on cushions. Dave here in just three weeks has lost all ability to sit on the floor.
rap whip. He's going outside. There's a cat door here. He's gone outside. He'll come back. I think he's curious what's going on. Sitting on the floor, not the kitchen table. I don't know. I don't think I can do this at a table. It just doesn't seem to make any sense. It's sort of the lesser of two evils here. Is that a bedspread? I'm not sure for what it is, actually. What we're looking at is the back side. The front side is a thing. It's you know, she's got a couch here, and on top of the couch, she's got a bunch of little spreads, five or six of them, and that's what this is. And I asked her if it was okay, and she said I could use the back side of this one. So I'm going to be careful. I'm not going to make too much of a mess here, but yeah, it's a bed. It's a spread. Are we not in the shop today? No, I'm in Vancouver today. I'm not uh, in Tokyo. This special stream is coming to you from. Vancouver, B.C. Not sure when I'll be back in Tokyo, but it shouldn't be too long now, I think. The thing that's going to be the deciding factor for me getting back to Tokyo is going to be my mom's placement, where we're finding a place for her to stay from now on. And we're now in the final steps of that. There's no real need for her to be in the hospital anymore. She's not ill at all now. So the next stage is finding a place for her to uh, to be cared for. And when that's uh, when that's set, I'll be heading back to Tokyo. And from then on, I'll be coming over here on a regular scheduled series of visits because my sister and I have to share the uh, share the I don't know routine care routine. Yeah, 4.30, it's 4.30 here. Okay, I didn't bring my finishing stone. I just brought my normal 400 and 1,000 stone. So we're not going to get a real super sharp finish here today. We're just going to get a normal sharpening. It's enough for what we're doing here. These are color blocks. All the carving of the key lines was done back in Tokyo. So we've just got a general can't get focus. Come on, focus, please. Camera, do your job. It's autofocus. Come on, go for it. Come on, camera, do your thing. Not going to do it. Not going to focus here. Doesn't matter. Good enough. Someone says, all you got is 400, 1,000. You know, honestly speaking, if all you had was one of these, a 400 with a 1,000, you can do this job. You know, if you're trying to carve staggeringly delicate ukiyo-e hair, you are going to want a knife that's a little bit sharper than that. But for all the normal work like this, I probably have my tongue cut out for saying it, a 400 and a 1,000, maybe 1,200 would be a bit better. If you had a 1,200 or something, that's what you need. It's okay. It's okay. Now, what I don't have is any oil. I knew I didn't ribbing everything. No idea. Okay, no lens, no close up, no microscope. Let's see. Taking my life in my hands here. She might have some oil. We'll see. She's, there's obviously it's a kitchen right behind me, so. Here we go. This is like the battle days before I moved to Japan. I 
I don't know, you know, I don't know which glasses are the best here. Nope. Yep. Too close, too far. Someone's asking, will it be difficult for me to get entry back into Japan? The legal entry is no problem. I'm a Japanese permanent resident. I just flash my passport, which has the visa inside it, and I'm in. So I can go back. I, of course, have to, co have to do the, the restrictions. And as I understand it at the moment, unless it's changed in the past couple of weeks, when I checked this just before I left, I am free to come back in as long as I do the usual routine. Show a negative test taken 70, within 72 hours of de departure. Get tested again at the airport. Wait for the test results. If it's negative, then I'm free to go. As I understand it, at the moment there's no quarantines for people who have that. Fully vaccinated, negative test before the flight, negative test after the flight, out you go. That changed in, at the end of March. But again, I haven't looked at it up in the last few days, so it may be different. If I need to quarantine when I go back, I can do so in the shop. I got my own room up in the shop, so. So, someone's asking about why am I in Vancouver? I'm, uh, my mom had a, had a medical accident, and we're, the family is gathered together to help her through it, and, and she is indeed getting through it, so. But I tell you, I am, I am not, uh, this is difficult actually, without a lens nowadays, this is difficult. I'm not really sure how functional I'm gonna be able to be here. Let's see, we'll give this a try today. Mum's not out of the hospital. She's in the hospital still. That's where my sister is with her today. I, I took a day off. I, I came home early today from the hospital. Mum's still there, and she will be for about another week, maybe, before she gets uh, moves to her next stage, the placement. Yeah, mom will be going to a care home, somewhere where she can be cared for, so. No, that's, I'm not at my mom's place. I'm at my daughter's place. So everything you're seeing here, the birthday balloons, my, my granddaughter's birthday was on April 2nd. There's kids' toys. There's nothing here for me. This is my daughter's place, not my mother's place. So. Am I the only one who left the States? The States, I'm not sure what you mean. Americans, we're not Americans, we're Canadians. We're English Canadians. I went to Japan, my brother went to Germany, where he is now, still. He wasn't able to hop back over here as easily as I was, so he's uh, still in Germany. Yeah, someone's suggesting go to Target or something. I may need a glass, you know, because I am, honestly speaking right now, I am struggling. These glasses are designed to like read a newspaper, and I guess over the years they have changed, and I'm not sure what angle they need to be. They don't work that close, that close, about there. I am being very careful here, and I can't definitely cannot do any fine line work, but let's see. I am taking this very carefully here. <laughs> there's no Target here, but there's a, there's a Home Depot 
just down the street here, right next to the supermarket where I go to get uh, dinner. I've been, I've been trying to minimize the impact on my daughter, and some days it's fine. I get back from the hospital and she's got dinner ready. Some days I've been at the hospital too late, so I just pick up my own dinner on the way home. What's it called? It's Whole Earth Foods or something? Whole Earth Foods, and it's on the way home from the hospital to here. That's a funny place too, you know. The first night I went in there, I'm like, I've died and gone to heaven. It's hippie type stuff, whatever, it's my generation. I was like that back in the 60s. So this is sort of that thing come, come true. They had wonderful salads, all good, beautiful stuff. The first day I was just, like I said, I died and went to heaven, got this wonderful, huge, beautiful stuff and sandwiches and salads and stuff. Second day, okay. Third day, okay. But after being in there four or five times, after a week goes by, I'm like, this is very nice, but these guys, this Whole Earth store, Whole Foods, Whole Foods store, Whole Earth, what do we get that from? Whole Foods store. These guys are just too, they're too serious. They're too intense. Yeah, the fourth day broke. I get it, I get it, I get it. <laughs> I get it, I get it. But no, it's just too intense. Like, give me a salad that's just like some greens and it's got a bit of dressing and it tastes nice. These guys don't do that. This salad, it's got to have the name of at least two or three things that I've never recognized before. It's got to be... They're just so serious, these people. Just so serious. So... I've started more recently, I've gone across the street to something else. It's a normal, what is it, Save On Foods or something. It's a, a normal supermarket. It's not supposed to be super organic or whatever, you know. So I don't know. I am definitely not a true blue hippie, for sure. They're so serious. Earnest, that's the word. Earnest, you've got it there. Earnest. So. It's like, I, am I going to get in trouble for saying this? It's like joining a cult, you know. I get it. The food is wonderful. It's healthy. It's healthy. But it's almost like you would expect from some kind of cult. <laughs> it's okay. I went back there last night. I'm, I'm changing out. I'm going in and out to the other place and to that one. But I suppose they're treating making their salads the same way that Dave treats his woodblock printmaking at Mokohankan. The staff there, everybody thinks I'm too, Dave, you're just too much. Just like back off a bit, you know. We can't make perfect prints. We're making good prints. Back off a bit. And I don't want to. And I guess it's the same thing. The people making salads and food over there, I get it. I'm not really shooting at them. Whatever. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah, I think they're owned by Amazon. I think Amazon has bought them now, I think. Yeah. So I guess there's, there's time and space for both, you know. But my God. I got one the other day. <laughs> it looked so good at the counter. I got it. I put it in the package, brought it home, got a drink, and sat there at the table. And do I have enough energy to eat this dinner? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, I got to be careful here. I shouldn't be doing this in public because I really don't think I can see this very well. Somebody's saying, why, why are you shopping there? Well, I'm, as I said, I'm swapping out. I've eaten there once or twice this week, and I've got food from the place across the street once or twice. So I think there's a balance. You know, I'm happy that there are such places. People are really serious about foods and healthy foods taking care of us. I get it. I'm not in any way hostile to the idea. 
and maybe if I lived here in Vancouver and I got I would get used to that it would just become normal I guess just that for me dropping in like that it really was quite a quite a difference from what I'm used to you know. but yeah I'm glad that there are people who are really serious about this and trying to take care of us and trying to build a society where food is healthier and better for us you know I'm not in any way trying to diss this you know I did notice the difference, you know, the, the whole earth supermarket with the f salads and whatever, and then you walk the middle aisles and there's various type of packaged foods. Then across the street is the normal supermarket, around the edge it's the deli and that stuff, and in the middle it's the packaged foods. And that's when it clearly becomes different, the, the regular supermarket, you walk in the middle aisle and you can see the packaged foods, it's the stuff that's going to kill us, you know, it's, it's really really over-processed foods. And that's when you sort of get the difference between these things. So, so yeah, I should be careful what I say. They're, they're, they're clearly good people trying to do the right thing. Absolutely. You know. And then the young couple here, my daughter and her husband with two little kids, four years old and, and one year old, they're, of course, they're trying to feed their kids as healthy as possible. Can't uh, can't say anything bad about this, you know, of course. Did I get the name wrong? Whole Earth. It's Whole Foods, right? I guess I'm I'm from the you know the old book back in the days, the nineteen sixty or whatever, Whole Earth catalog. So I've got the I've got the two things confused in my mind, I'm sorry. It's it's whole foods, of course. Sorry. Sorry. And I don't have many other experiences of Vancouver. Haven't been on a train yet. Haven't been on a bus yet. I've just been walking back and forth between Fumi's home here and the hospital. I am totally out of touch with Vancouver weather. This is interesting. You know, I lived here for, I don't even know, 20 years or something. I don't remember. And yet I've been caught. I go out in the morning, look out in the morning, looks good, no rain, get soaked on the way home because it rains. Take an umbrella in the morning, like this morning, yeah, it looks bad, looks like it's going to rain. It's beautiful blue sunshine. So I have no, no feeling for the weather here at all. I don't have a clue what's going on. All I know here is that the weather just seems to be completely, insanely changeable. We had one day last week, the first week I was here, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was sort of going to be a rainy day. It was a bit cloudy. And this is, we're talking about April here. This would have been April the 10th or something, whatever, a couple of weeks ago. And it hailed, it snowed, there was a couple of those, what do you call them, like twister things came across town, you know, like a tornado type thing on a small scale. And one of the weather reports we saw in the evening was that. It was Vancouver weather today, April the 10th, whatever, 100% chance of everything. And that's really what it was. It really was crazy. You know? Hundred percent chance of everything. I have got to go really slowly and carefully here, I'm sorry. I just cannot really see this very well, you know. I think after I'm done here today, I'm going to head over to that Home Depot place and see if I can find something that might be usable. I can't buy a scope, but I've got to, I'll need some help. If I'm going to do this in the next few days until I get back to Tokyo, I am going to need some help. Stacking up the glass, I wonder, someone suggests, I wonder. I wonder if it'll make a difference. Let's try that. Yep, 
You know, that might be a thing. Look at this. That might be a thing. It's gone clear here. I gotta get closer. Look at this. Who's the man for a chocolate egg? The person, now I can't see the chat. <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? Who said stuck up the glasses? Vivid KP, take, take a dozen chocolate eggs. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got a hunch over. So, have you tried this? Is this something you've done yourself? <laughs> it actually works. I thought it was a joke. Look at that. I got to go real close, but it's now sharp. Look at this. But I can't see anything else. The computer is now a massive blur. <laughs> Okay, can we bifocal this? Can we put these at the bottom and see the computer at the top? Maybe. No. Yes. Yes. So Vivid used to do that. Yeah. <laughs> there we are. There it is. Through the top half of the chat, I can read it now. I used to do that till I bought the magnifying visor. Hi. Hey. That's going to do it. <laughs> Live and learn. Karen, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> You've saved this print. I can see also where I screwed up a couple of minutes ago. Mm, don't look, anybody. Very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Make him a mod. It's a she and she is a mod already. Vivid KP is a mod. Was perhaps our first mod. I don't remember. <laughs> Someone's talking about a swan. I don't think we have any swans here. Oh, no insult about the gender. Okay. What we've got here, it's not swans, it's, uh, well, it's no secret. Where's the key block? Here's the key block. You can almost tell what the image is going to be. That's the top print, and that's the bottom print. And the block we're carving right now, uh, see, we've got two of the color blocks done. The first color block is going to be a very, very light blue tint. And you won't see most of it because it's going to be under everything else. This block that's already carved, the only place you will see this color is in some of the places that are going to be carved out of this one. Like you can see there's water down here and there are going to be ripples. So the base tone, which will be here, will be light blue. And then printing on top of it, we'll print a darker blue slash purple slash green color. And it will have these white spaces cut out of it. So that light blue area will show in the print through just these areas only. We can't take a dark area and print light blue on top of it. So we have to print the light blue under everything first. We print a darker one with highlights chopped out. That's a key part about this woodblock printmaking. We can never print highlights. We can only omit highlights. Whatever, if you stick around, we'll get to this over the next few days, weeks, months, whatever, when this one comes time to print. You know, there's nothing I can say here that will cleanly explain the whole thing except for that kind of a concept here. We build it up, as far as carving goes here, we're going to build it up from lighter to darker. There's going to be six faces progressively getting darker. It's almost actually like what they call a reduction print and we could do it as a reduction print. We could have done it that way. We could have just carved one piece of wood, printed it in light blue, the whole area, make your X hundred copies. Then on that same light blue block, then cut those ripples out. Then you print the same thing again with a darker pigment over the same 200 copies. 
and you work cutting back smaller and smaller and smaller until finally you're just left with the darkest parts of the image which you print dark. So it stacks up one level, two levels, three levels, four levels, five levels. But if we did it that way, we can't make any more copies because you've destroyed your block at every stage. So we're going to make kind of a reduction print with a different block for every color, which is going to mean a lot of repeated carving, but the benefit is we can then make thousands and thousands of copies as the years go by. They're monkeys. Tom's asking, did I think about a new streaming schedule? I did, and I don't know what to do. If anybody has any ideas about that or thoughts about this, let me know. And I'm sure our European friends would like to talk about that. While I'm here in Vancouver, should I stick to the old original streaming schedule, the Tokyo timetable, or should I do something different? I'm open to suggestions here. This particular time for me now, 4 o'clock to 5.30 in Vancouver, is actually uh, useful for me. The house is quiet, the kids are not here, my mom is having her afternoon nap, my sister can take care of her over there. So this time is suitable for me. But I'm open to hearing other suggestions, absolutely. Four, seven. Thank you, guy. I got a life, you know. I have a life. Yes, Europeans, I get it. It's very late. I get it. I get it. I get it. So someone's saying, how long do I anticipate being here? I think I've been here now three weeks, and I would guess the, the nursing placement is happening, we think, perhaps next week. The next placement meeting is happening Monday morning, and it it's possible that under the fastest circumstances she could be placed and in her new home by Friday, a week, a week today. That's sort of the earliest way the schedule could happen. And if that does happen like that, once she gets settled, I then have to think about zooming back to Tokyo for a while and then coming back over here, in and out, in and out. Her placement may not happen by next Friday, it may take a couple of weeks, but that's my immediate schedule. The idea is to stay here until her placement is decided. So my sister's booking off now. So my sister and my mother over there at the hospital have been watching from now for, for a little while under S. Hamilton. They're going to book off now. Oh, it's dinner time. Of course, dinner has arrived. Yeah, 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 yeah. See you guys later. No, thanks for the good wishes and everything else. You know, it's I, I'm a bit sorry that we we dropped everything so suddenly. You know, I just disappeared. I I did what I thought was the right thing. I left a message on the front page of the Twitch channel, but what I hadn't really understood was that people who visit using a phone or something don't actually see that message. It's only people who are using a desktop. So for most of the viewers of this channel, I just disappeared, and it turned out that they had no idea why. I sort of apologize for that. I thought I had left the message that everybody would see, but I wasn't aware that almost nobody would see it. So I'm sorry about that. Not quite sure what else I could have done. I don't know.
at this, stacking up the glasses. I never, ever, ever would have thought of that in a hundred years. Karen, thank you very much. I never, ever would have thought of this. Can't see anything else, but I guess that's not the point. The other thing, too, that I've really got to start thinking about seriously now is YouTube. I haven't done a good YouTube video now for many, many months, and I think the algorithm is getting antsy. I mean, of course, YouTube viewers are getting antsy, but what I'm really worried about is the algorithm getting antsy. If the YouTube algorithm has decided that, okay, this guy's finished, he ain't posting anymore, and if they drop us, that's going to dramatically... Uh, dramatically affect our business because uh, we get massive business coming through YouTube. People that have watched the old videos there. But if I don't get some new interesting content up there soon, the YouTube algorithm is going to decide that, uh, that I'm history and it's going to kill us. So, uh... Yeah, someone's saying 35. I don't, I, I don't have the number in my head. I, you can check it after the channel. It's way more than that. It's way more. It's something like 85 or something like this. Percent of the people who are watching these are watching on mobile. It's a stunningly high number. It's like our website as well. The, the shopping cart we have and everything else. It's now overwhelmingly mobile. I had to bite the bullet and, and do that. I, I resisted as long as possible because I myself don't have a phone and don't use a phone. But if that's the world, then of course... My mother has signed off here with my sister, you know, to, to have dinner, and uh, I can be, share a bit of news. Uh, yesterday was her first day on real food. They've got this qualification of how well people can eat and swallow and stuff after having a stroke, and it was difficult for her. So the first couple of weeks, it was, you know, it's spoons. But she has now uh, been, yesterday she was given the go-ahead for the real food, so the trays changed last night and her mood brightened up just night and day. Having, you know, quote, real, unquote, food made all the difference. And today she was perky, she was happy, she was ready for the exercise. John is here. Hello, hello, hello. hi guys. Yep. John says, good morning. Is it that time in Kentucky, Tennessee? I haven't a clue what time it is anywhere these days.
Oh, everybody, you know, everybody's been coming. Thanks for the good wishes and all. My mom is, uh, my mom is doing very, very well. She went really down for the count, and we thought, we thought it was all done. And uh, there were discussions with the senior people in the hospital about the, the plans for you know, plugs and whatever you name it. That's how far it was. My mom went right to the door. She went right to the door, and then something inside her. She decided to come back and play another nine holes or 18 holes or whatever it is she's going to get. And the last few weeks in the hospital, she's been, whatever, chugging along down the hallways, doing this, doing Wordle every day. She's going to hang in for another round. But we really weren't sure for, for a few days there. We really, really weren't sure. And there were some fun conversations with some of the nurses. I mean, they've seen this stuff all the time. The, the nurses just see this. It's their everyday life. And at one point, I was chatting with one of the nurses, you know, about this. And the nurse says, no, 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 we know. She's going to be OK. She's going to be OK. And I'm like, what do you mean she's going to be OK? Like, I thought she was at death's door. And the nurse says, no, 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 no. She's 95. She's made it this far. These are the fighters. Like, the ones they see in this ward, the post-stroke ward, are the fighters, the ones who are not fighters didn't get this far, you know. So the nurses are like, yeah, yeah, we've seen this type. You just watch. She's going to be chugging down that hallway like nobody's business in a few days or whatever, you know. And it wasn't a few days, but here she is. A few weeks later, she's today. She's chugging down that hallway, you know. It's incredible. Incredible. Yeah, I mean the nurses have this all sussed out. They, you know, they've seen it all. They've seen it all. You know. So. I've been watching her and helping where I can, you know, and of course I'm thinking, you know, where's it going for me? What will I be like when it's my turn, you know? I'm 70 now and I think I'm okay, but it's really hard to imagine myself at 95, you know, I have a bit of a stroke and I'm in bed there. So I just want to leave, just let it go, let me go, let me go, or do I want to get up and fight again, you know? And it must be overwhelming, the urge just to say, okay, look, it's, God, that's enough, just let this go, don't bother me anymore, you know. That urge must be there, you know. And yet, here she is. You should have seen her this afternoon, chugging, chugging, chugging. <laughs> So <laughs> she's waiting to see me finish the chitty machine. Actually, that's not true. She thinks I shouldn't be messing with that. That's an interesting thing you mentioned. She's like, don't bother with that stuff. You know, she thinks I'm wasting my time with it. She may be right. She's like, tend to your own business. Do what you got to do for yourself. Control the things that you can control and leave the rest. Don't waste any time on it, you know. So she thinks I'm wasting my time with that stuff, the chitty machine. There's the Hoxai quote, of course. Is, is somebody playing with this, the Hoxai quote, whatever? So I have three sets on 95. It's the Hoxai thing, and I, this is apocryphal or not, or it's a leftover story. He's whatever, Hoxai died at, what was it, 95, 99? I don't even remember, 95. And he's like yelling, no, 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 just give me, let me, you know, one one more picture, it's going to be better, you know. <laughs> is this admirable or is this insane? I don't know, you know. I don't know. I would like to think that at some point I could recognize that we're done and that I could go with good grace, you know, instead of fighting. And the other half of my mind wants to just fight to the last drop, you know, I don't know what's going to happen.
Yeah, the Pablo Casals quotes, I guess there's a whole bunch of those. I'm not sure how much are real and how much are apocryphal. But I can see that. I know in my own life here, I'm 70 now, and you think about this printmaking gig, and there's two, there's two sides to that coin. I am making progress. I'm learning more about this. I could make better prints. I could create better things at Mokohankan with my age and experience. But the downside is, of course, it's the mechanics here. The eyes, the muscles, or whatever, are, are not doing it. And I don't know how someone like the Casals handled that at 88, because physically his muscles may have, must have been, you know, giving up on him. So I think the, the mental aspect, the knowledge, experience, wisdom, are going to get better and better if we can as we get older. But the, what you can actually pull off with your body may be a different story. And this is what's happening to me at Mokohankan. I'm less important to Mokohankan now as a carver. I'm doing an extra job here, the Patreon Chibis. We have to do it, we have to do it nicely, but it's not mission critical to our job this month. But what I do bring to Mokohankan more and more is the overall guidance, the direction, you know, what we should be doing and how we should be doing it. So that's where my age is a, is a, fa is a, a plus factor, you know. And I would like to think, I guess, that's how this is going to play out. The older I guess, I'm shuffled off into a corner. The older I get, I get shuffled off into a corner and doing work that's not going to be so mission critical, maybe not so delicate, all that I can handle with my degraded, you know, physical setup. But I would hope to be a very important part of the guidance team for this place right up to the end, I hope, you know. So I'm not giving up. I'm not going anywhere. I like this. I'm having fun and I want to do this. But the things that I focus on will almost certainly change over the next next bunch of years. And actually this trip now, being forced to make this trip right now, has been a major step in this way. The girls, Ano Watanabe-san and Ayano-san, they've totally taken over now. They're doing all the order processing. They're doing emails to customers. And honestly speaking, I probably shouldn't have been doing so much of that. It should be something done by competent staff. But I, I've been wanting to do everything and everything and everything. The sizing, I guess, I still don't know about that. Aoyama-san is okay, but he's not that experienced at it. And there could be some disasters coming up if, he's, if we keep on this way. So I don't know. But yeah, this trip has been a real good boost to me to move towards the next stage in my life. And I think when I get back to, to Tokyo next next week, two weeks from now, we're going to have a meeting with the staff and sort out where do we go from here. And with Dave having to do more trips to Vancouver, get me out of the production line and get me doing more of those other jobs, many more videos, more steering, what's our project for next year, stuff like that. And then in my family care. So get me out of the day-to-day -day work at Mokohankan and get me doing more of the other stuff that only I can do, you know. Well, someone says, I wonder if Mokohankan can exist without Dave. Right now, no, because the knowledge isn't spread around widely enough. But this experience this month is a huge step for us at moving Mokohankan to a state where it can exist without Dave. Because without that, there's no point. There's no point. Those kids want real work after I'm gone. And this experience this month is a, a big step on that road. I think the analogy sort of, it's a bit pretentious to use this analogy, but the analogy is there. It's the Steve Jobs and the Apple thing, you know. Most of us thought that Apple couldn't exist without Steve, you know. But I guess what it turned out that he could do, he and Tim Cook did, he didn't do it himself. He built a culture that did stuff in a certain way, and that's what I should be focusing on at Mokohanka. I shouldn't be doing it myself. I should be building a culture that does it the way I would like to do it. And if I was were successful at that, then they will have a chance to keep going. When Dave has his stroke or whatever is coming up, I don't know. So yeah, don't do it yourself. 
build a culture that will do it the way you want it to be done. Easy to say, isn't it? So easy to say. Sometimes for noise, I don't really know. There's like structural noise. This building has radiant heating and there's pumps and stuff that circulate water upstairs and downstairs. There's a sort of a breathing sound that the building is making and I don't know what that is. There's a faint roar in the background and again it sits the plumbing and the HVAC, like the air. There's this thing on the roof here in every room and I guess there's laws in Vancouver, the, the building, every, there's got to be like uh, X cubic meters of air have to be exchanged every hour and stuff. So there is background noise here. I don't know what it is. The, at night, this place is silent. It just goes. But yeah, right now, there's a sort of a roar in the background. Well, there are people living upstairs. This is there. These guys have the downstairs. It's an old, old, old Victorian house that's been converted into the ground floor, the second floor, and the third floor. So there's, there's the occasional pop, 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 pop. People walk by upstairs. It's off. Some pump stopped. I think there's a kid. There's a kid upstairs. This is the living room. So upstairs is probably the living room. That's where the kid's playing. It's not a beauty. It's not you know, a problem. If I was living here, I'd be fine with it. These guys have kids too. And I think my daughter told me that they've talked to the people upstairs. You got kids, we got kids. They're sort of game with each other. So nobody is complaining about this sort of thing. Speaking about kids reminds me of something. It's a good chance to ask. Next to me here, can you see it? Hang, yeah, you can see them hanging up. These are balloons, helium balloons, from a birthday party on April 2nd. It's now April 22nd, 20 days later, three weeks, and helium balloons are still full of helium. I had no idea that was possible. Back in my day, you get a balloon and those helium balloons are gone in an hour. So something, they've got some kind of something in them. I guess it's, the, but helium is so, what's the, 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 the atoms are so fine, right? It permeates everything. So I'm astonished to see this, three weeks. Oh, someone's asking about show and tell. Well, I don't, today, I don't have show and tell. I came with a couple of wood blocks. I came with a box of tools. That's all I have. What I do have is I've got the key to my mother's apartment. And over there, she has some collections of prints that I sent her over the years. She was a, a subscriber, a free subscriber to my prints for many years. So if I have a chance to drop by my mother's apartment one of the next days in these next couple of weeks, I'll bring some prints from there. Or 
maybe we can actually stream from over there. We'll try it. And I might have a show and tell. But at the moment, I have nothing. I came barehanded. I just ran to the airport and came. So I didn't bring with me any collection of prints. So I'm sorry. Sorry, I don't have an actual show and tell. Blame my mother. <laughs> Someone says you had balloons from one birthday to the next. Really? Really? Pick up something random in the house. I'm not going to start show and tell with my daughter's fridge. No, please, give me a break here. Hello, give me a break. We've got a little bit of carving going here. We'll pick up a little bit of these streams. Please don't, let's not try and get everything all at once. I can't replicate the experience of our Japanese streams while I'm over here. So please, don't, don't sweat it. When I'm back in Japan, there will be a return to show and tell, and there will be lots of things waiting. But please don't, let's not try and, and fail to, and rip, to try and replicate replicate that experience. This is a, uh, this is a, an emergency setup, a temporary setup, so it's not going to be the same as our normal experience, so please. Okay, then I guess I should. Uh, what's the plan here from now on? I tried this today, and it looks like we can do this. I've got a block. We have, you know, six pieces of wood here. I have to do a bunch more carving, and it would really be cool if I could go back to Tokyo with these things finished. So let's, you know, what's the date going to be here? Today is, for me now, it's Friday afternoon. What's the normal setup for these streams? It must be my S Tokyo Saturday, Tokyo Monday. So let's do this. Let's book. Let's make a tentative date. Give me a bit of flexibility here, but let's make a tentative date. I will try for the next week or so to stick to our classical streaming schedule. If I can't make it, I will post in advance earlier that day. I will post on the channel, the channel, what's it called? Our Twitch channel has a front page with a picture there with me printing something, and there's some text on it. So I will try and make these streams at the normal schedule, but if I can't, I will post on the, on the front page of the channel. So if you're on a mobile or something, visit a browser or go and see the front page of the channel, and I will tell you what's happening there. Dave will be here today, or he won't be here today. So I will try and stick to the traditional same timetable that we've been doing for all these years. Maybe somebody's made some suggestions here today, and we'll maybe take those into account. But for the moment, let's do this. I'm here now. This is the Friday night, Saturday, Tokyo morning stream. I'll be back here two days from now, Sunday night, Vancouver time, Monday morning, Tokyo stream. Let's, let's try this. But with the proviso that, you know, if I have to stay at the hospital later on some day, I have to do that. Those will take priority, and I will post something about that in that image that's on our Twitch channel page. At the moment, that's all I can do. When I'm cleared to go back to Tokyo, we will pick up the full streaming that we used to do with show and tell and, and everything else. looks like my son-in-law's Wi-Fi has done this. I have no error messages here at the bottom. It seems like we've got through this okay. <laughs> yeah, John's got it right. <laughs> I do have to be careful. My daughter, she's, she's a nice housekeeper. This place is actually quite nice. I'm trying to be the, the minimal 
what do you call it, the low maintenance guest. I'm up early in the morning, I sneak out before their kids get up. I come back at night after their kids are in bed, spend the day at the hospital there. I'm trying to be as low maintenance as I possibly can. Am I off cam? What's happening now? Wait a minute. I'm curving here. How can I be off cam? I haven't gone anywhere. Okay, here we go. This is fabulous. That the suggestion from Vivid KP about the glasses, that's made all the difference. Half an hour ago, before she said that, I was really thinking that I cannot do this. I'm just going to screw this up because I can't see. But after Karen's suggestion about stacking up the glasses, I can actually do this. So we're good to go. We're good to go. I will be back here for the next stream. Yep. When was the last time I was in Canada? Just visiting just before the virus. I know I was here February 20, 2020, when the pandemic hit. What year was that, that the pandemic hit? It hit in March, it hit in February, March. And I came over in February, even though there was already, the virus was starting to spread around the world. I came over for a short visit and quickly dropped back to Tokyo and I made it just in time. I got back to Tokyo and like three weeks later the gates closed and it was all over. So Well, John, you bought a ticket for Wednesday for April. That was optimistic. That was very optimistic. I think my advice all the way along has been not to do that, but whatever. <laughs> I have no idea. I've been totally out of touch with Japanese news, so I don't even know what the current mood is. Are they ready to open up again or not? I haven't uh, any knowledge of that. I'll have to start looking at the Tokyo news. Someone's on the Japan Times. Things are slowly progressing, meaning what? Uh, just before I left, they had opened up to international students, people who were like doing things like university courses or you know university exchange programs and things like this. But when I left three weeks ago, there was still no sense at all that tourism would be allowed. I haven't followed it since then, so I'm not sure. The business end of things and the government and the travel industry does want to open up but the general population the impression that I had was that the general population did not want the doors open at all yet but I don't know what the current mood is I'm sorry I myself will be allowed in as far as I understand unless there's some new variant comes up here in Canada in the next couple of weeks and Japan won't let me back in for that reason we'll see I don't know it's quite possible I'll be stuck here if, if it changes so I'm saying how am I enjoying my trip to Canada I, I have done no travel I'm sorry I came from the airport to my daughter's house and since then it's been this house to the hospital and to the supermarket house hospital supermarket house hospital supermarket 
So I have no no other experience here, I'm sorry. As we mentioned earlier in the stream, I'm not actually enjoying the people I've met, but maybe that's just me, I don't know. I think it would take a while to get used to this place again. It's so very different from Japan. I don't know. I really shouldn't say because I have been haven't been out and around. Okay, so we are going to be able to do this. My legs are killing me. I haven't sat on a cushion like this for ages. Ooh! Oi, 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 oi. Okay, let's go. We've done our 90 minutes here. Okay, gang, so it does. It looks like I'm going to be able to do these. So as I said, we'll, we'll sign off here now. But as I said, I'll try and keep to the, the normal Tokyo schedule as well as I can. And I will post each time on the front of the channel page whether I'm going to be up and running on any given day or whether we're going to be off because I have to stay in the hospital for longer, something like that. And I'll, my mum, we have passed on to my mother at every stage of this. We've passed on to her the fact that many, many people have given their best wishes for her. They've been you know, wishing for her recovery, things like that. She is well aware of the wonderful support that's coming in from this community and the other communities she's part of as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you all so much for your patience with me during this event and for your support of her. She is recovering. She is coming back. She's asked me to do one thing. She really, really, really doesn't like the handle name It Is Hopeless on Twitch. And she's asked me to change it for her. So when she comes back in a few weeks or a couple of months or whatever, she will be known on Twitch here as Bet Bull. We won't be seeing It Is Hopeless again at all. She's coming back as herself. Not quite sure when that will be, but as I said, she's back around. She's come, she wants to play another round. So whatever, <laughs> we're gonna go with it. <laughs> thanks very much again. But what can I say? It's a scramble, it's a mess, but thanks for the support that everybody's offered. And I'll see you again here, hopefully, probably at the same bench doing the same thing with my double glasses on. We'll see you again here couple of days from now and I look forward to reading this chat at uh, tomorrow at lunchtime thank you very much guys thank you very much for all the support it's really 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 appreciated to know that so many people are helping us out thank you <laughs> see you next time bye for now <laughs>